Now in Australia, computing has developed from the 1970s um, through to today with a range of different approaches. Originally we started off teaching pure computer science and generally it was done in mathematics. Um, students learning how to program. Um, originally schools didn't have their own computers so they were sent off to universities to have the pro programs run and come back and see the results. But eventually we then had our own computers and they were then used in schools and then we had the microcomputer revolution where more and more computers became available. And then we had a big distinction where it was decided that every subject should have access to these new computers because they were becoming productive. Uh, we could do word processing, we could do spreadsheets, science experiments and a whole range of other things. So we developed computing across the curriculum and the focus then shifted from teaching computer science to teaching how to use applications. Now in the final years of, of schooling, because we were still preparing students to go into tertiary studies, we still had a focus on computer science. But in the other years of schooling, particularly in primary and in lower secondary, the shift was very much towards how to use various applications, how to use word processes, spreadsheets, um, video editing, web pages, all of these sorts of approaches. Now that was okay, but we then stopped focusing on learning fundamental skills and concepts and we simply were teaching about how to use applications. And one of the things was students might learn spreadsheeting um, every year and they'd learn more and more of the different capabilities of how to use uh, particular spreadsheeting software. But it wasn't developing their understanding of the fundamentals of computing. So in the in the turn of the oh, in the in the twenty tens, essentially in the United Kingdom, um, this came to a head through some investigations um, prompted by the head of Google at the time, who was dismayed at the state of computer education in schools and how it wasn't preparing students to go into computing careers. Yes, they were learning lots of fun activities and learning how to use various tools, but they were receiving very poor preparation for a world that was being dominated by computing. So in the United Kingdom, the, it was so bad that they actually said, stop teaching the computing curriculum. It's doing more harm than good. It's better not to teach it than to keep teaching the way it's being taught. And they asked industry to step in and help rewrite the curriculum to have a greater focus on what the field of computing had moved to. So at the same time in Australia, we were starting on a process of coming up with a national curriculum, where instead of every state and territory having their own curriculum, we would have one national curriculum for years F to 10. We still haven't achieved it for years 11 and 12, but it was agreed that it would be achieved for years F to 10. And one of the subjects within that was going to be digital technologies. So that then led to the development of the digital technologies curriculum. Now it took quite a few years um, and went through a long complex consultation period. So I've given you some details about that just so that you understand some of the history of where we have come to with our curriculum now. Of course, no curriculum is static. It's going to continue to be developed. New things will change. And over time, you will need to become aware of and understand and eventually lead these processes. So at the moment, you just need to be have a general understanding of where we've come to. At the moment, the curriculum has just gone through its first major revision, where we've looked at how it's been going for the last 10 years for the overall curriculum and the last six or seven for digital technologies, because we came a little bit late because it was staggered in terms of the development. And that revision provided some feedback and a new version of the curriculum has been released. Now, schools will not yet be teaching that new version. 
takes a little while for schools and education to make changes. And so in Queensland, it's been mandated that schools will ad have adopted the new curriculum, the new version of the curriculum, version nine, by 2026. So I've still got a few more years. That said, some schools will be adopting it much earlier. Um, now you're in a bit of a difficult position because you'll be coming into schools, going out into practicums and becoming a teacher during this transition stage. Now, luckily you missed the introduction stage. That was much, much messier. And the differences between version um, 8.6 and version, sorry, um, well, yeah, 8.4 and version 9 are not very great. So it won't affect you that much. The main impact is that a lot of the resources and material that's available have been written for version 8.4 and they're progressively being rewritten for version 9. New material is being written for version 9. So we're going to focus on version 9. But there will be some material that you may find that relate to version 8.4. So you may need to make some modifications. They're not huge modifications, but it does make it a little bit more complex. So what's in this curriculum? It's a nice onion diagram that you'll find on the web page that shows the various layers of the curriculum. At its foundation, the focus is on creating solutions, students creating solutions to problems. It's not a purely theoretical subject. It's not a purely applied subject, but it's very much focused around students creating these solutions to problems. Now, the subject digital technologies goes from foundation, essentially kindergarten, through to year 10, with years 9 and 10 being optional. Years F to 8, it's mandatory, which means all schools and all students should be um, offering the subject and learning the subject. That said, it's not always the case. We're still somewhat in a transition phase um, of the introduction of the subject. Of course, it's been a big change. This is a subject that didn't exist 10 years ago. Um, and for most teachers that were already teaching, it's something that they never learnt in schools and they've had to learn in its entirety as a completely new field. So for many teachers, particularly in primary, it's been quite a significant shock. We'll talk about more about that in tutorials and as we progress through the course. But we now have this learning area called technologies and within the learning area, there are two subjects, design and technology and digital technologies. In primary, they're often combined quite a lot. In lower secondary, what you'll be focusing on, generally they're taught as two separate subjects. But there are some schools and some school systems, notably New South Wales, where they are taught in an integrated way. And some schools even combine them with um, mathematics or science and call them STEM, science, technology, engineering and mathematics. And some even incorporate the arts and call them STEAM. So there are a whole range of different ways schools can implement the curriculum. And that's very much left up, up to individual schools and school systems. So within the digital technologies um, subject, there are a whole range of guidance that are provided by the curriculum. And you're going to need to become very familiar with this curriculum, not just for your assessment as part of this course, but also as part of you becoming a teacher. Of course, this is how you're going to understand what to teach your students, but also how to assess them and how to report on that assessment. So it is a fundamental part of being a teacher is understanding the curriculum. It's really your guide to how to, um, so to what to teach. How to teach is still left up to you in terms of pedagogy, but what to teach is very much defined by the curriculum. To an extent, there is still some flexibility as a teacher in how about how you go about framing those learning outcomes. So you can do it through teaching about robotics or through an exploration of space 
or the environment. There's a whole range of contexts that you can still place around the learning outcomes that are required as part of the curriculum. And you can very much build those contexts around your interest and your students' interests. And we'll discuss that when we explore pedagogy. But you still need to be guided by the curriculum. OK, so as part of the curriculum, the first and probably most important part is where it sets the aims and rationale for why the curriculum exists, why the subject exists, why we're actually teaching students about digital technologies. Many teachers don't place a lot of emphasis on that aspect, but it is really fundamental and core around all of your teaching. Within that, we then have a series of strands, um, well, two strands essentially. One is around knowledge and one is around the process, essentially the problem solving cycle. And again, we'll be exploring that in more detail. Then there are some core concepts, which are the key fundamentals that you need to ensure that students learn. One of these is computational thinking. Um, others are understanding of data. So there's a whole range of different concepts that you need to make sure students are learning about. Then you have other what are called key considerations. Some of these are how the curriculum connects with other subjects. Others are how it connects with the general capabilities. We talked about digital literacy as one of the um, general capabilities, but there are a whole range of others that you also need to ensure that students are learning about because you have, don't just have responsibility for teaching digital technologies, you also have a responsibility for teaching these um, other considerations. All subjects have the responsibility for them. They're spread across all of the subjects, but it means you still have that responsibility. You have a particular responsibility for ensuring your students are learning about digital literacy, but you also have to ensure that they're developing their capacity around literacy and numeracy um, and a whole range of others that we're going to be looking at. Then you have the cross-curriculum priorities, which are some special focus that um, need to be addressed in students' learning around Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander issues, around our understanding of the place within Asia, and around sustainability. And in particular, sustainability is a bit of a focus in the technologies learning area. Then we get to what are called the level descriptions. These are what most teachers focus on. Of course, they give you the nitty gritty learning outcomes that you can tick off saying students have learnt these things. And yes, in practice, that is what you're going to focus on. But it is not the most important part of the curriculum. These content descriptors are what achieve those core concepts and achieve the aim and rationale of the subject. So they have a purpose. They're not a purpose in and of themselves. OK, so these content descriptors are broken into bands and essentially two year bands. So they're described as what students need to learn by the end of year eight and by the end of year 10 for what you'll be focusing on. You also need to have a bit of an understanding of what students will have learned by the end of year six. Of course, that is what you should expect your students coming into your classes or having an understanding of. Then there are some assessment standards which define about those content descriptors what students need to be able to demonstrate. And then we have elaborations, which are suggested ways of going about achieving these content descriptors and assessment um, standards. Now, the elaborations are only options. You can come up with your own options. Um, they're just some ideas of how to go about teaching these content descript um, descriptors. You're not bound by them. Then finally, there is a section on related content, particularly in how what students are learning relate to what they're learning in other subjects. For example, there's a fair bit of overlap with what their students are learning around um, data acquisition in mathematics 
and what they're learning about data analysis in digital technologies. And you'll find other interrelationships as well, particularly around um, designer technology, which uses the same design cycle process. And then finally, there's a glossary, which helps you make sense of all the terminology that you'll find in the curriculum documents. So it's going to take a while to get used to these curriculum documents. We're going to be starting in the activities and the tutorials, and we're going to be working through various aspects throughout the course. But you need to dive in and start trying to make sense of the complexity that is the Australian curriculum.